set to get underway between the Cornhuskers and the Nittany Lions. Going to be a tremendous matchup from University Park, Pennsylvania. Head coach for the Nebraska Cornhuskers is John Cook in his 12th season with the program. Of course, two national championships with Nebraska. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Tachi Kara. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, we talked about Gina Mancuso, but Morgan Brookheis has also been a standout for a hitter for Nebraska. Yeah, and really the thing about Nebraska is their offense is so nicely spread out by all the hitters, both the outside and middles. And old hat for Russ Rose, this kind of matchup, of course, in his 33rd season, four consecutive national titles and five overall. For Penn State, sponsored by Tachi Karup, the lineups for the Nittany Lions, Deja McClendon, another star for them. Of course, these two teams met once already this season. The Cornhuskers taking a five-set victory in Lincoln, Nebraska. 19th meeting all time between these two. It was a battle the last two occasions. They've gone to five sets in the last two meetings. Really been Nebraska and UCLA, the only teams out there who have a winning record against Penn State in 10 matches, Audrey. We're in for another great one. Yeah, it is going to be a real treat. We're going to see high-level volleyball. All elements of the game are going to be spectacular. Underway in University Park, Pennsylvania, and Cook goes to Mancuso for the first kill. Now Lauren Cook taking care of a tight pass, and she jump sets and pushes the ball all the way outside to her favorite outside hitter, and that's Gina Mancuso with a kill that went right between Penn State's blocker's hands. Gina Mancuso, the two-time Big Ten Player of the Week, current reigning Big Ten Player of the Week, and a force on the outside for the Huskers. Looks to McClendon, who answers back for Penn State. Yeah, it's going to be the battle of the pin hitters. And there you saw Deja McClendon accelerating, getting up so quick. And what I liked about that hit, it, it actually went high over top of the blocker's hands and deep in the corner. That's a key shot for McClendon tonight. Good start for McClendon, who struggled in the early going of the Big Ten season. Hey, let's go. You got the center. again, off the Penn State block. And Nebraska on top 2-1. Audrey, give us a few keys to this one. Yeah, for, for Nebraska, they really need to pass well, especially when Hancock gets back there to serve because she's really good. And the other thing they need to do if they pass well, when Nebraska spreads out their offense and three or four hitters are involved, they're pretty hard to stop. That states Hancock has to run it down. Brooke Heiss off the touch of Penn State. Again, she gets the kill. Audrey, to get back to some of the keys for the yep. Nittany Lions. Well, Penn State has to believe that they can win. They've kind of had some bumps along the road here in this first half of the Big Ten season, so they've got to play with confidence, and they have to know that they have what it takes to knock off this undefeated Nebraska team. Russell is very unhappy with his team after last night. They combined for 29 errors between attack errors and service errors. They need to be better tonight. Clendon again tries to roll it over. And Cuso back up, and it falls down on the Nebraska side. Well, just the slightest hesitation on defense will cause havoc, and that's exactly what happened to Nebraska. Here you see the ball trickles over, and she thought that the defense was going to come up and play the ball. She ends up stabbing on it. That's number 17, Haley Tramer. Tramer now tries to get one back. Longo with the set to Scott. The touch goes off with Ivy Hannah Worth and the point to Penn State. Now this is a real key for Penn State too. What do they do with balls that are out of system? They're going to put it high to this kid here, number one, Ariel Scott. And if she can deliver kills like that, it will be a tough night for Nebraska. Going to be a tough night with Micah Hancock back serving for the Nittany Lions. She's second in the nation in service aces. She sure is, and she's got that top spin, that fastball that is also a curveball. And right now she went for Laura Dykstra, Nebraska's libero, who's typically their best passer. Russ Rose has just told her to go back and rip it from the service line. She gets another ace, and Penn State on top, 6-2. Yeah, you know what? If she gets into a rhythm, and Cook calls a timeout because she cannot get into a rhythm. Nebraska has got to find a way to slow her down. Penn State on top. They're into it as their Nittany Lions are on top in set one. 
left-handed swing that she has, it causes the ball to curve. It's a deadly curve, and it, it just comes at you so quick. Service ace number three in a row for Micah Hancock. Yeah, and the other thing is she just goes for it. She's got so much courage on the end line. That's why she is leading the Big Ten in service aces. There's her wonderful spin serve that she has. Leads the Big Ten, also comes up in the biggest matches. She had seven service aces against Illinois earlier this season in Rec Hall. Service ace number four, Hancock cannot be slow. Yep, and you know what? It does something to your confidence when you're getting beat. That time, it was Haley, uh, no, not Haley Tramer, sorry, Brooke Heiss, who just got it in the face as she was trying to serve the ball. Her face is red. Her nose probably feels like it's on the side of her face right now. Four aces for Hancock. We're not even 10 points into set number one. Nebraska finally able to get a pass and a chance. Need to side out, get the ball away from Hancock. Whistle, net violation against Penn State, and Nebraska breathes a sigh of relief. Yeah, and if you're Nebraska, when she rotates back to the service line, you have to think, I don't need to get a perfect pass. I just can't get ace, because Cook is good enough. She'll track those balls down and do something with it. So Nebraska really needs to take a deep breath when Hancock's on the service line. That's Mancuso to serve for the Huskers. First chance with the tip. Penn State tries to send it over, but Maddie Martin puts it into the net. An error there by Maddie Martin, and we talk about it, Audrey. 29 combined errors last night for Penn State. It's been something that's plagued them all season. Yeah, and Nebraska will tip the ball in the backcourt to Micah Hancock. She's playing right back right now. And so when she plays the first ball, somebody else has to set it, and that makes the offense a little bit more predictable for Penn State. So that is Nebraska's game plan right now. Put the ball in Hancock's hand the first time around so she cannot set the second ball. A couple of errors on both sides of the net for Nebraska and Penn State. So 9-4 lead in set number one to the Nittany Lions. National freshman of the year a season ago, Deja McClendon now serving for Penn State. She flips the net. Brookhuis now stuck by Ayanna Whitney. Well, that was a nice block by Penn State. The middle blocker accelerating to the outside. There you see Katie Slay getting up and sealing the block, but that was all number 14, Ayanna Whitney. Ayanna Whitney has not played in the last two matches, finally getting back into the rotation for Penn State. And Cuso out of the back row puts away the kill. And you've got to keep track of where Mancuso is. Just because she's a back row player doesn't mean that Cook is going to shy away from setting her. That's, in fact, a, a position where she scores a lot out of just right out of the middle, that pipe set coming right up the gut. McClendon can't handle that serve, and it's out of play. Nebraska now with their second consecutive point. Yeah, we talk about keys, and for Penn State, again, they've got to win that serve-pass battle. Passing is the key. It's the very first skill, the primary skill. And right now, McClendon's being subbed out. And uh, number four right now, Dominique Gonzalez, is coming in to try and handle that serve. Dominique Gonzalez had a nice match last night against Iowa. Some great digs, but Penn State could not finish off of her passing. Inside to slay, a bit high for her, but she still gets the kill. Yeah, it's super important that Slay gets involved in the offense. And she's got such a good vertical. She jumps real well. She's 6'6". Six, six. Take a look at the jump. But again, there's backspin on that ball, so that's not her strongest hit. I'm sure she would like to get her whole hand on the ball instead of just her fingertips. Communication has not been there between Micah Hancock and Katie Slay this season as Delano there in the middle for the Huskers. Scott this time. And Penn State puts away another. We talked about the communication. Hancock has had great communication with Ariel Scott, but in the middle to slay, it's the timing that has not been there all season. Yeah, it's it's really hard. It comes with a lot of repetition. So Hancock, even though she's been the setter, you know, for the entire season, it just takes a lot of time. And especially when you're setting such a tall player, you don't feel like you're setting a short quick. You're almost setting a two ball in the middle. So timing, like you said, is so important and so difficult to master. Another kill for Ariel Scott. Hancock mentioned last night after the Iowa match that she needed to set a better ball. It was too low for Katie Slay. Another timeout for John Cook and the Huskers. Penn State up by seven in set number one. 
Nittany Lions hoping to take the first set. More from Happy Valley in a moment. By Hancock. Huskers did not have an answer for it. They were able to finally side out and get the service away, but they still trail in set number one, down 13 to six. Ball goes over to Penn State. Hook to work. Penn State with a great up. Now Brookheis, blocked by Whitney. Wow, Whitney's come to play tonight, hasn't she? Take a look at this dig here. That's what I call defense. And then lights out on that nice block by again the freshman, Ayanna Whitney. And an ace this time for Longo. She's second on the team in service aces, and she keeps up right where Hancock left off. Yeah, and you know, this was an area of Penn State's game at the beginning of the season that was not their forte. And now look at they're just taking risks and really going for it on the end line. So of course, Russ Rose knows their weakness and fixed it before midseason. This is nice to see for Penn State. Penn State leads the Big Ten in service aces. Brookheis takes advantage of the overpass. Now the Huskers looking to get something going as they take back the service. Nebraska, the number one team in the land for the first time since 2007. 18-1 record overall and 11-0 in Big Ten play. This time with the swing, too strong, but the touch is called. And Penn State gets the point. And the thing that I've noticed about Nebraska all year is they tend to get better as the match goes on. So they had a slow start last night against Ohio State. They certainly weren't playing their best ball in set one. So perhaps that's what we're seeing tonight as well, a little slow start from them. I'm sure Coach Cook would rather this not happen, but however, we're seeing it again tonight. 061 in last night's match in set number one for the Huskers, and 062 right now. Yeah. So you get a sense this is not what John Cook wants to see. I think that sounds like a bingo call, doesn't it? 61. Whitney with the tap into the net and down. Comes off a Husker, goes back into the net, and Nebraska couldn't get it out. Yeah, nice heads up play by Ayana, Ayana Whitney. The you know, ball was set a little bit too tight, and so typically those are really hard balls to handle. You got to get your feet to the ball and try and jump straight up. But if you can't attack it, the only thing left to do is tip and try and find the block on the way down. Audrey, you talk about Nebraska struggling the first two sets the last two nights. A lot of people mentioned this is the toughest road trip of the entire Big Ten to go to Ohio State and Penn State in back-to-back -back nights. Yeah, it is tough. And, you know, Rec Hall does have a somewhat hostile environment, but that's not the challenge. The challenge is getting here from Columbus. So, uh, especially with the weather this weekend, it hasn't been a real easy task for anyone. <laughs> Paige Hubble back to serve for the Huskers. Clendon with a big swing. Longo has a tough time with it, and Penn State can't control it. Cornhuskers back within seven. Yeah, I've seen Nebraska do this time and time again. They take balls that are not dug perfectly to the setter, and on setter touches the ball, and they end up executing a very nice kill and get a point off of it. So that's a skill that a lot of teams would like to have. A great out of system team in the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Big reason they've gotten off to that great start. from the back row. Hook to Mancuso again. Clendon with another chance. Nice. Overpass by Penn State. Nebraska now with a good opportunity. Cook takes the swing, and she gets it down. Well, Cook's excited about that. She doesn't often get a real set. That time, Mancuso delivers the ball to her. And a nice job of just placing that ball perfectly in Penn State's open court. There you see it lands in the left back area. Lauren Cook at 5'8", rotates into that front row. She doesn't get off and have a chance to take those swings, but she'll take that one with the point for Nebraska. Good tap over by McClendon. Brookheis with a great save. Hancock tries to go over on two. It's into the net and double contact call against Penn State. Yeah, Hancock's a lefty, so when she's up at the net playing that right front area, that's really her strong side as a hitter, and we'll often see her take swings at the ball. That time, the ball never cleared the net, so she really didn't take a ball that was high enough and attack it. And what you should do is jump set as high as you can and really push that ball down. 
So we see Nebraska come back a little bit, and Penn State wants to call a timeout. Russ Rose will talk it over. We'll take a look at news and notes around women's collegiate volleyball. Of course, Nebraska number one overall, Penn State in the top ten. Three Big Ten teams ranking number one this season, a testament to how strong this conference is, Audrey. And then, of course, UCLA beating Cal last night gives Illinois a chance to move maybe back up to number two. Yeah, you look at the conference, and not only have three Big Ten teams been number one, but there's, it's solid from top to bottom. <laughs> you look at the ABCA, we've got so many Big Ten teams in there. It's unbelievable. This co uh, conference is so competitive. you got to bring your A game every night. Exactly the words from John Cook when we spoke to him earlier this week. When they head out, they expect great competition. That's the biggest difference for moving from the Big 12 to the Big 10 is they expect the competition every night to be at a high level. And it's great to be in this conference because it prepares you for the tournament. These teams from the Big 10 are conference competitive in a uh, it's easy for me to say, very competitive in this conference. And so when the tournament rolls around, they are ready to challenge any competitive. They're also very ready when you talk about the fact that the schedule in the NCAA tournament is exactly the same as the Big Ten schedule. Friday, Saturday plays the same way in the NCAA tournament. That's a challenge for Nebraska moving from a Wednesday, Saturday schedule. It's a little bit of a mix up. And of course, they get more prepared and Penn State rest the big game. These are the teams that make runs deep into the NCAA tournament. You're absolutely right. You said it very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so Penn State with the five point lead in set number one. Other still serving for the Huskers. Service here by Nebraska, and Penn State moves within seven and taking set one. And it's clear to me that Nebraska is really picking on Maddie Martin, that every serve seems to be going to her. She's a sophomore, but really hasn't had a lot of court experience, uh, has gotten to play a little bit this year, so they're really picking on her, seeing if she can elevate her passing game tonight. Back well for Brookhuis, blocked there for Penn State, and it's down. I feel like Penn State was ready for that. This is a team that scouts very well. Penn State knowing that Nebraska will set backcourt just as often as they set their front row hitters. They were ready for it. Penn State leading the blocking battle 3-0 so far in the match. Out of system for Nebraska, another block. Well, I hope you can see what happens there. The ball was passed in the left back area of the court. There was only one option. So there you see Penn State's block literally just waiting there to eat it up. And then they're so big that it's really tough for Mancuso to hit around there. Setter Michael Hancock moving in on the block there for Penn State. Kramer on the slide, tools the block for the Huskers. Yeah, you've got to do that when you've got big hands in front of your face. You've got to try and tool the block. So if you've got vision, you take that ball and you wipe it high off the blocker's hands and especially in for out of court. Once it makes contact on those hands, push your hand on the side of the ball to wipe it off. A world of difference for Penn State from the last time these two teams met in set number one and a world of difference from last night as Nebraska able to send it back off the slide to attack. Yeah, the slide kind of evolved slowly here, so Nebraska's blocking team was there waiting. Take a look, and then, you know, even though the middle blocker for Nebraska was a little bit late, good heads up play by her. She was late, but she still got up to seal the net. Nebraska's second in the Big Ten in blocks per set so far this year. Scott from the back row, strong swing and finish. And she's a champ, I'm telling you. She accelerates so well. She's taken her first step as the setter releases the ball. And then she's got that vertical where she's able to hit over top of the block and such a nice follow through with her snap. 10 kills and nine of 11 with 10 matches for Ariana Scott. Micah Hancock gets another service ace. Huskers doing all they can, but they can't get to that tough ball. Boy, Nebraska went hard for that. It was Hannah Worth that tried to get this ball. Take a look at this serve. And it's sailing out of bounds, but look at Worth's effort there. Wow, good hustle by Hannah Worth. Hancock now with five service aces. She tied a school record with seven against Illinois. She's already there, it's only set number one, she's got five. Penn State can't tap and finish, and the Huskers able to bounce back. Well, if you're Nebraska, you're breathing a sigh of relief because she only ended up getting two points on you, so now it's your turn to try and serve tough. You know, that is what a good server brings to a program. Micah Hancock has really kept Penn State in the lead in this game just on her one contact, the serve. Well, 
Chicago with a box set to Scott, who puts it away. Out of system, and Penn State still gets the point. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash BTF Volleyball. Ask a question to Audrey, anything you have about Big Ten Volleyball overall or this match. We'll get to those questions later in the match. Twitter.com slash BTN Volleyball. Audrey is, of course, monitoring the Twitter account as we speak. <laughs> and a worth with a point for the Huskers. They have a long way back in this one, but Nebraska's been known to go on deep runs. That's right. And right now, Brooke Delano just rotated in for Nebraska. And Lauren Cook likes to set her in transition. We'll see if she can score some points for her team. Slay in the middle, can't put it away for Penn State. Brooke Heist now, left-handed swing and kill. Yeah, a lefty on the right side, that's her strong point hitting. And so she takes that ball and it's set fairly low. She jumps really well, so the ball is set no higher than the antenna. She hits it at the high point, and the block is for the, uh, Penn State is not able to form really well against her right now. Cook to Delano in the middle. With the tape and falls on Nebraska's side. Set point number one for Penn State. Team in service aces. Already has a service ace so far in this match. <laughs> Worth with the puck set to Brooke Price, sends it over. It's a free ball. Chance for Penn State. Find it back row. Penn State takes set one. Wow, it's been all Penn State on the service line right now. Nebraska's pass is having fits, and they are out of system more than they are in system right now, it does appear, at least in the last part of that first set. Penn State on top after one set. They lead the number one team in the country, 1-0. Back to rec hall in a moment. Blockers are camped on the outside, and they're able to get those big blocks. Penn State will continue to serve aggressively throughout this match. Nebraska, on the other hand, not one of the most aggressive teams you see from the service line. They fall last in the Big Ten in service aces. Now, that's not necessarily a testament to their overall serving, but they're going to need to serve tough in the rest of this match. Yeah, try and do something to get a team off balance. One strategy would be to serve some short and reel the passers in and then serve some deep. Another strategy is to just serve in between two players in the seams. So right now, they really have to take some risks on the service line to try and get this Penn State team out of system. Ready for set number two as the setter for Nebraska, Lauren Cook, daughter of head coach John Cook, heads back to serve. Tough serve there from Nebraska. Wended now. And Cuso. Looks to be again. Touch off the block. Worth with a great dig in the back row. And Cuso now out of play. Nebraska wants the touch. They won't get it. Man, in that rally, we saw the setters going after the ball on both sides of the net. He had Cook really running balls down. And also for Penn State, my goodness, she was going hard for it. Micah Hancock really struggling to get the ball, but ends up putting up a great set. So good swing and kill. Well, Nebraska out of that serve receive pattern will run Mancuso out of the middle. There you see she's typically an outside hitter. A good change up. Nice strategy by Lauren Cook to set Mancuso in a different spot along the net. Hancock looks for Slay. Tough pass, but she still gets the kill. Where that tip has worked for her a couple times. Again, if you're tipping the ball when the block is coming down, it's really hard for the block to control it. So nice heads up play there by Katie Slay. Of course, Katie Slay was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week just a couple of weeks ago. With 18 kills at 500 and 11 blocks last week for the Nick Lions. And Hancock won't get that ace. Oscar send over the free ball. Scott puts it down. Arian Scott cannot be slowed so far. Yep, and when you send a free ball over, again, Hancock is serving. You send that free ball over if you're Nebraska. This is what's going to happen. Penn State in system, setting their big go-to hitter, Ariel Scott. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
at that one. Mancuso rolls it over. Scott again with the tip for the kill. She has that big swing and open. She goes out there and shows it, but the tip really effective that time. Yeah, it worked for Katie Slay, so why not put the block, put the tip over the block and see if Nebraska's team can run it down. This time, and got one. Well, that's going to happen when you serve as tough as she does. From time to time, you're just going to miss it or put it into the net. She has that green light any time from the back row. This time stuck by work. Solo blocked by Hannah Work, and that may be just what Nebraska needs. And it was a good call by Russ Rose. We have the advantage point. We can hear what he's saying over here. We're really close to the bench. And he said, set our star who hasn't gotten enough swings right now, McClendon. Tough serve this time from McClendon. Back set over to Brookhouse. Longo now to Scott, stuffed again. Nebraska gets the block going. Yeah, Delano got her hands on that one. And really, Scott had nowhere else to go with this. It was slightly uh, under set and into the court. I know she's disappointed about that, but after all, it is her first error of the match. Delano, a two-time All-American for the Huskers. And off-season shoulder surgery. Whitney wrote pretty good up there for Nebraska. Both gets a chance on the swing. Back row for McClendon. Both with another chance off the Penn State block. Longo bump set goes to Scott, stuck by work. Nebraska's block making the difference in set two. Yeah, Scott's timing slightly off there. Non-setter was touching the ball. It's set very high. And there you see Nebraska's block dominating. And it, did you see Cook in the background? Always the cheerleader out there. She's pumping her team up, celebrating that block. Service there by Nebraska. Penn State on top, 6-4. In set number two, they took set 125-17. Whitney Lyons trying to avenge an earlier loss to Nebraska in Lincoln. Cornhuskers Huskers won in the Big Ten opener in five sets. Cook goes to work. Great up by Longo. Hancock now to Whitney. Work with another chance and she puts it down. Hannah Worth does it everywhere on the floor for Nebraska. Yeah, she just turned it up a notch, didn't she? Boy, those last two swings, the last one terminating, but the one before that, boy, that was a hard hit. And Longo denying her of that kill, but the second one, wow, just a completely rocket, a complete rocket that she sent over. That was Hannah the Hammer in Lincoln, Nebraska. Hancock now on the inside to Grant. Whitney taps it over. Worth is there. Cook with the back set over to Brookhines, who puts it away. Nebraska getting a little rhythm here finally, and Cook with a very nice pass to Morgan Brookhines. Well, let's take a look at this. Brookhines getting the hand of the block again. It deflects, and those are really hard to get. It's sort of like, you know, it ricochets so quickly that the defense doesn't know where it's going. Service air on Hannah Worth. Penn State takes back the service and the lead in set two. Kristen Carpenter will check into the match for the Nittany Lions. She gets an ovation, especially after what she did last year as the setter for Penn State, leading them to their fourth consecutive national title. She's moved into more of a DS role this season, but still a big impact player for Penn State. Well, absolutely. She started off as a DS and then became a setter, and now a serving specialist. And she's doing her job so far with that service ace. Gives Penn State the two-point lead. Again, it's that top spin serve that goes between the seam of the passers. Nebraska really having fits right now with Penn State's outstanding service game. This one way out of play though by Kristen Carpenter. So even there between Kristen Carpenter on her two serves, gets a point and loses one. One point lead now in set number two for Penn State. 
And you wonder if Rose will sub her out and put Scott back in because Scott is such an offensive weapon. And right now, she's not on the floor. Former walk-on for the Huskers, Paige Hubble back serving. Bump set from Brooke Heisman and Cuso. Longo with a good up. McClendon stopped. Combination of Tramer and then Cuso. Yeah, that's a tough block right there. You know, we're focusing a lot on the net play, but it's outstanding right now. This is as good as it gets in college ball. Take a look at this block, hip to hip, reading the play perfectly, and penetrating at the point of attack. It was 5-1 in favor of Penn State after set one in terms of blocks. Now it's 5-4 as Nebraska really playing well at the net in the second set. Tapped over by Whitney. Whitney with another swing. Quick goes to Brookhouse. Long and out of play and an air on the Huskers. Well, it is a back and forth battle. This is what I expected, what I was hoping for. And boy, what a treat it is. Of course, in that first meeting, Nebraska took the first two sets. Almost looked like they were going to sweep the Nittany Lions in Lincoln. It was a 12-5 advantage at one point in set number three. But the Huskers saw Penn State come back. A big reason why Ariel Scott in set three and four. Gonzalez serving for Penn State. Goes on that slide to Tramer. Overpass. Penn State with the block. Lights out. Audrey, we head to Twitter for a question for you in a moment. As Gonzalez sends that one over. Kramer out the slide. Longo able to get a hand on it. And McClendon get it to Hancock for the free ball. And for Mancuso, big swing and kill. Boy, Mancuso. Wow, just nailing the line shot again. She's hitting over top of Micah Hancock, who's only 5'11". She accelerates, gets well over the blocker's hands, and just nails it down the line. Hancock runs it down. Clendon this time. Hook out of system. This gets a pass over to Brooke Heiss, who sends it over. Grant on the slot. Set by Brookice this time. Mancuso can't put it away. Micah puts a swing on it, but she sends it long. Audrey, we go to Twitter for a question. Twitter.com slash BTN Volleyball. Question, of course, we'll have coming up later in the match, but follow us on Twitter. You can ask Audrey anything about the match. Lauren Cook, the 2009 ABCA National Freshman of the Year, Big 12 Newcomer of the Year last season. Could get another accolade in the Big Ten this year. A great center for the Huskers. Cook nice. Tap back down by McClendon. Well, the thing about Cook is you got to expect the unexpected, and Penn State does. They're camped out here. There you see McClendon not dropping off to play defense, but rather stays at the net to block. So they know that Lauren Cook likes to set behind when she's moving forward. Cook goes to Mancuso. McClendon, great up by Dykstra. Wolf sends over a free ball. Inside to Slay. She can't put it away. Cook now to Tramer. McClendon this time stuck by Tramer. Wow, uh, great defensive plays in the backcourt. Hannah Worth showing why she was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year back there, but then McClendon trying to get the kill to stop this rally. Wasn't able to do it. She ran into a big Nebraska block. Russ Rose unhappy with the officials after that sequence. Might have been looking for a double touch call against Nebraska. Point either way, though, goes to the Huskers. It's tied at 11 in set two. Hancock to McClendon again. It's time to touch off the block. Worth with the tap, looking for that back row. Continuing to look to McClendon. Pancake by the Huskers. They can't send it over. Point goes to Penn State. Hats off to Nebraska's defense going hard. But take a look at this. 
little change-up shot there. Again, they play so deep because she's going or trying to go high off the blocker's hands when she has all those hands in front of her. And she sees that. So a nice heads-up play by Deja McClendon to recognize where the defense is and go around it. Number five for Deja McClendon. Work stuck. A battle of blocks and wreck off. My goodness. What physical play we're seeing at the net tonight. Katie Slay, Scott. Boy, that's exciting for Penn State. Slay and Scott forming the six foot six and six foot four block. Tough to get over that one. Cock with that. Just passive serve. And Kusel, though, sides out for the Oscars. Again, it's critical to note that Hancock only got one point while she was back there. That was a real difference maker in the first set. She, run, she ran off a whole string of points. So we're going to pay attention to the rest of the match. Maestro with the float serve over. McClendon, she puts it away. Penn State has been looking for a night where Deja McClendon and Ariel Scott go on. In the early portion of this match, they have. Right, and it's either one plays well or the other plays well. So if they can get a match where they're both playing that high level volleyball that they're capable of, it just changes the dynamic and the look of this Penn State team. Really been the story for Nebraska all season. They've had that balance. But it's been work. Brooke Heiss, middle of Schramer and Delano. And Cuso obviously leading this team. Seven kills already for Gina Mancuso. So much balance has allowed Nebraska to look different places and allowed Lauren Cook, the setter, to be deceptive the entire season. One of the toughest setters to read in all of the Big Ten. Yeah, she's the perfect setter for this Nebraska team because she will take risks, and anybody that she goes to can typically deliver a kill. So it's nice when you're that type of setter, and you've got the courage to move the ball around, but then your hitters will come through and get the kill. Penn State getting work from their freshmen as well. A 15-13 lead for Penn State in set number two. They're on top in the match. More from Rec Hall when we come back. And of course, she's been the focal point this year. She's had to step into a very big role for the Huskers. Well, she certainly has, but what's impressing me tonight about Mancuso is she's really elevated her blocking game. She's smarter. She's not releasing. She's waiting to see where the point of attack is going to be. She moves her feet laterally very quickly and has done a better job tonight blocking than I've ever seen her do. It's one of the things that Coach Cook talked to us about. He said that everyone talks about the attacking of Gina Mancuso, but everything else she does defensively or even on the block, they don't get as much attention, but she does such a great job of it. Well, and she's also one of the primary passers, and so what Penn State is doing is they're serving her deep so that she's got to back up to get the pass, and then she's got to hustle to the outside to get a full approach. So she's been very active tonight and has been playing very steady for Nebraska so far. Three blocks for Mancuso so far in the match. And Cox goes to Scott between the block. Now Mancuso. Back row for McClendon who puts it down. That violation called against the Huskers. So McClendon won't get that kill, but she'll take the point. And she's all smiles after that one, thanking her setter for a perfect set in the backcourt. Take a look at that. Set was right on the money by Micah Hancock. Communication so key for a young setter in Micah Hancock, just a freshman out of Edmond, Oklahoma. What a huge role to fill for this team. And Russ Rose wants to see her communicate more and be on a better page with her teammates. Delano this time. Yeah. Boy, Delano only had one block, and she was trying to rip line. When you only have a block that's taking your line shot away, rip it cross court. So a miss hit there by the two-time All-American, Brooke Delano. Well, 12 airs for Nebraska in the match. Delano this time into the net. They're going to whistle that one for contacts against Nebraska. All right, so they served Gina Mancuso short. Gina's on her knees and couldn't get outside, so they only had one other option to set, and that was Delano. And it was a very predictable set because Mancuso wasn't ready to hit. So that's what serving short will do. And Audrey, we 
you talk about Penn State and a national program. They've won four consecutive national titles, but also they're a national program, and they look all over the country for players. You see the list of different states where players have come from. Only one player from the state of Pennsylvania. You know what you don't see, Audrey? You don't see the state of Nebraska. Not many players from Nebraska make it out to University Park. No, I don't think so. Nebraska does a good job of recruiting in-state. You know, these kids, they grow up wanting to be a Nebraska Husker, and they work hard to be a Nebraska Husker. Nebraska's club program is second to none. They develop some wonderful players. They look to those homegrown players in the state of Nebraska, of course, and then they bring players from around the surrounding area, but one international player as well. But you talk about them growing up watching Nebraska volleyball. Haley Tramer would record every single match and make sure that she caught it no matter what. She did not want to miss the Huskers play at all, and now she's living the dream of playing for Nebraska. She is, and she's from a very small town in Nebraska. I heard that her hometown only has like one stoplight. So what a dream it is for her to be playing with this Nebraska uniform on her back. It's a matter of state pride for Nebraska. No following in the country is quite like the Nebraska volleyball following. Penn State obviously has their great following in Rec Hall, but a consecutive sellout streak of 158 sellouts at the NU Coliseum for the Cornhuskers. Really just an incredible number when you think about it being a Nebraska volleyball program that doesn't quite as get as much attention as you would expect. Right, and I've been there a couple times this season, and the fans there are so incredibly nice. Another air by Nebraska, Van Cuso can't believe it. And these airs here in the middle portion of set number two has allowed Penn State to open up a five-point lead. Okay, so Nebraska's in a two-hitter rotation right now with Pippen in the front row. Tapped over by Whitney, and the point goes to Penn State. They're five away from taking a 2-0 lead. Yeah, Pippen's in the front row, so she was trying to attack that ball and a nice heads-up play by Anna, Ayanna Whitney to be on the setter and make sure that that dump was not going to get past the net. Ayanna Whitney, again, has not played in the past previous two matches. She now has three kills and three blocks. Carpenter with the ace! That's so nice to see Carpenter participate out there, contribute, and she has been a stellar server. Again, Penn State's entire team has done a good job of serving tough. It's now eight service aces for Penn State. And the Nittany Lions on top, 21-14, another look at it. Yeah, right in the middle of two players, right in the seam, and that ball was attempted by Laura Dykstra. You know, typically she is right on the money with serve receive, so you can just tell how tough these balls are that Penn State's uh, serving across that net. Five service aces for Hancock, two for Carpenter, and one for Allie Longo. This week on BTM.com, don't miss any exciting volleyball action. Go to video.btn.com this week and check out our upcoming volleyball schedule. Go to video.btn.com for more information. Audrey, every single match in the Big Ten, we talked about how important it is. And of course, you'll be able to catch so many on, of them on video.btn.com. And we head to Twitter for a question for Audrey Flaw. Audrey, why does Russ Rose sit in a different color chair than the rest of the coaching staff? Well, I guess to show he's the top dog of the program. It could be one of those things. I don't know if there is a reason for it. It may have just been the chair that was available to him. <laughs> That's a funny question. <laughs> but I think he gets the, the situation he can call and make his own decisions at this point after winning five national titles, being named the ABCA Coach of the Year four times. And of course, earlier this season, Illinois head coach Kevin Hamley did not sit in that chair. He refused to sit in that chair. So Russ Rose makes his own That's right. claims out here in Happy Valley. Cook goes to Van Cuso. Talking to Whitney across court. Work with a great up. Rookheim's tapped over by Delano. Carpenter gets a hand on it. Cook to Brookheim's. Longo ready for it. Now McClendon back row attack and down. And Russ Rose is celebrating the effort of his team. He's clapping and really impressed. Take a look at these great digs here. Watch that save. 
Nice set and then a sharp cross court hit, but great team effort there by Penn State. Carpenter puts it into the net. You do not often see Russ Rose openly clap in the middle of a match. Absolutely not. He's not very animated at all. In fact, very poker faced, but I was impressed to see him clapping and cheering his team on. I think he recognizes great hustle when he sees it and wanted to encourage this young team. Penn State three points away from taking a 2-0 lead. Trying to mimic what Nebraska did in Lincoln when they went up 2-0. Uh, Hancock goes to Whitney, puts it down. Great set again by Micah Hancock, taking that tight ball, jump setting it. Take a look at that ability she has. And then one block, and that block is Lauren Cook. So a short block at that. It was all Ayanna Whitney with the kill. Zares will check in to serve another freshman for the Nittany Lions. Cook back set to Tramer. She looks at that Cuso this time. And they're going to get a net violation. The call will go actually against Nebraska. So the point goes to Penn State, and they have set point number one in set two. Strong swing by Man Cuso, but it hit the antenna, so it's out of bounds. With the tap off, puts it away. Penn State takes a 2 0 lead. Penn State saw their 68 match Big Ten home winning streak come to an end on October 8th. Does not mean that they've lost that home court advantage, though, and they're on top 2-0 over the number one team in the country in the Cornhuskers, trying to avenge that earlier loss to Nebraska in Lincoln, in Lincoln, of course, where Penn State fell to Nebraska. The Cornhuskers will have to look to rebound in set three and four and do something similar to what Penn State did on September 21st. We'll send it over to Audrey Flaw with head coach Russ Rose for Penn State. Well, Coach, so far you're ahead two sets. What are you guys doing well? Well, you know, I mean, we played well the first couple of games. The uh, I, I think our setter's playing a lot better, and, uh, you know, our serving has been really strong this evening. You know, Micah came out with four aces in a row in the first game, and Carp has a couple aces. So, you know, I think the most important thing for us is, you know, we need to keep pressure on them from the end line. Uh, you know, they're, they're a terrific team, and, uh, and we know they're going to compete and come back hard. So. You know, we'll have to come up with a couple of new things uh, during the break. I'm sure they will, and uh, you know, do the best we can. Well, we saw you get a little excited there, clapping the defensive effort of your team. Are you pleased with that area? Well, now one little rally, it was great. You know, it's we haven't seen that very much. You know, I mean, the Ross, we're playing three freshmen and three sophomores, so it's been hard. I've been hard on these guys, so it's nice for them to, you know, it's nice for them to have a little fun, and you know, when they do something well, I'm not opposed to telling them it. All right. Good job, coach. Good luck day for travel around University Park, Pennsylvania. Get the most recent PSU sports news and information plus all your apparel needs at the home of Penn State Athletics, GoPSUSports.com. Penn State with a big day, another victory for the Nittany Lion football team, number 409 for head coach Joe Paterno, passing Eddie Robinson for the most wins all time in Division I football. And of course, a tremendous match brewing here in Rec Hall. We saw last time they met, they went to five sets. Nebraska went up 2-0, looked as if they were in control on their way to a sweep, and then Penn State put together a rally. I don't think anyone would be shocked to see the Cornhuskers rally back here. Yeah, I think with both of these teams, you can never uh, just count them out. I think the locker room talk was probably pretty intense for Nebraska. A couple things they need to do better. Uh, it's no surprise. They have to pass a little bit more consistently. Even if they don't pass perfect balls, just put it up to the tip. Foot lines magic. Look, the back row to Brooke Heiss who gets the first point and kill for Nebraska in set three. Of course, we talk about Russ Rose, one of the winningest coaches in all of volleyball. Of course, one of the most tenured coaches in all of Penn State. Joe Paterno, 46 seasons, not counting his time as an assistant. Char Moret, a field hockey coach, and of course, 33 years for Russ Rose. Yep, and you know where he started? 
at Nebraska. He got his master's degree at Nebraska. He was the defensive coach in 1978. Wrote his thesis while at Nebraska on volleyball statistics. You know that's factored into the way he's coached his team and the program over his 33 years in Happy Valley. Point goes to Penn State, and we're all tied at one in set number three. Of course, John Cook used to coach in the Big Ten before he went to Nebraska. Spent from 1992 to 1998 at Wisconsin, building that program. And then went to Nebraska and defeated Wisconsin in that national championship match in 2000. Yeah, and he has just built Nebraska's program. They are just a team to be reckoned with, not only in this conference as we know, but nationally, just such a superb conference. They've ranked number one a number of times throughout the years. Most of any program all time, Nebraska atop those charts, 82 weeks. Penn State behind them, though, at number two at 67 weeks. So an error against Penn State. Yeah, you talk about, yeah, some, there are some good hitting errors, if you can imagine, you know, aggressive errors. And then those, those errors that Deja just hit right there in the middle of the net, you just don't want to make those type of mental errors. Hancock looking for Slay. Worth for another dig in the back row. And Cusa. Coco looked to Brookheis this time. Scott out of system. Side this time blocked by the Indy Lions. That was Wilberger for Nebraska into Katie Slay. Boy, it's not every day you see Burkai setting a 31 to her middle. Uh, but Slay stayed put. That's exactly what you want to do. That is your hitter. The middle blocker across the net is the middle blocker's hitter. So you stay put until that ball is released. Once you know where it's going, then get to the point of attack. Katie Slay leads the Big Ten and blocks for set. And the dangerous Hancock back serving again for Penn State. But a side out for Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska really needs Brookheis to come alive. She's hitting negative .053 in the first two sets. She's managed to get another kill here, so that's certainly going to help not only her confidence, but her team. Tough serve for Van Piso. Scott will send it over. Hook to Brookheis. Block was there for Penn State, but still in play. Brookheis again. Stay Joe McClendon for the kill. You gotta love that when your hitter gets blocked and then she transitions quick. She gets off the court, off the net fast. And you give her the set and she puts it away. So nice play by the lefty for Nebraska. And they keep looking to Brookheis. She's now, as you mentioned, she was hitting that negative number up to 083 with seven kills. Hancock, tough pass there. Slade just sends it for the back corner and gets the kill. Well, Slade, so far in this game, she's been so effective with her tips. What a nice save there by Hancock. And then Slade putting it in the corner. Here's a tip for Katie Slade, 6'6". Six six. Tough serve again from Penn State. And Cuso out of the back row off the touch of the block. Point Nebraska. Yeah, that's a tough one for Slay. You know, you want to stay put and you want to go up and challenge that back row attack with the block. But when it deflects off your hands and goes out of bounds, boy, that's a tough one for the back row to get. So Mancuso coming through in the back court for her team. Slay and out of play and blocked out of bounds by the Huskers. Point goes to Penn State. We go back to Twitter, Audrey. Twitter.com slash BTN Volleyball. Another question for you. And of course, on the Twitter landscape, they want to know who is your midseason player of the year? Well, I've got to give kudos to Lauren Cook. I think she runs that team. I think she's such a courageous setter, so unpredictable in what she does, and she's working with some really tough passes here. So she really has to elevate her game. I've seen her play spectacularly. So we'll see if Cook can kind of pull it together for her team today. Brookheis goes to work, but that one's going to go out of play. He touches the antenna. Of course, Twitter.com slash BTN Volleyball. As we talk about the Big Ten Mid-Season Player of the Year, as we mentioned, Audrey, you went through it. There are a couple of other candidates that could be out there. Mancuso might be another option. Of course, you look to Penn State. Ariel Scott has been playing at that level. Right. And I've got to say, Hancock with that serve so far uh, in this game has been unstoppable. So, you know, there are quite a few talented players in this conference. 
uh, but I certainly appreciate what Lauren Cook does for her Nebraska team. Usually see those hitters get the overall awards, but Lauren Cook, such an animated setter, can get it to anyone on the floor. And one of the big reasons why they've been so successful. Mia Grant on the inside this time for Penn State. Worth with a big swing and kick. Wow, Mancuso with a nice heads up play. She was running to get the ball, to get the second ball. Just puts it nice and high in that left front corner. And then a big hit by Hannah Worth. Too strong and out of play. No touch call, point goes to Nebraska. You know, that second left side position for Penn State has sort of been a revolving door between outside hitters. We see Whitney in there now, but we've certainly seen Maddie Martin in there and Katie Cavis. So we'll see if, you know, Whitney struggles who Russ Rose will put in for Penn State. Block this time, combination of Delano, and she tries to fire up her teammates as Nebraska on top by five. Of course, Hannah Worth was involved in that block as well. Probably gets the block assist, and Hannah Worth, you see the goggles that she wears, almost iconic at this point for her and the Nebraska program. She plays at such a high level and so aggressively that sometimes the contact she would wear would pop out of her eyes with a big swing. Hannah Worth, of course, suffering from a Injury when she was in third grade, took a ice skate to her chin, cut her neck, and broke part of her jaw. That also did cause problems for her vision. She felt that throughout high school. Into college, they finally got her with a behavioral optometrist. They got some things sorted out, got her the rec specs, and she's been a tremendous player for the Huskers. Yeah, and you know what I appreciate about her is her backcourt defense. She was the 2010 Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. And she's just all over the back court. She's able to get those balls that deflect off the block. But then the ones that come to her very quickly, she's got great floor skills and she's very courageous. She kind of steps in in the middle of the court and will take it head on. Of course, she came up with a double-double against Ohio State last night. She has 28 double-doubles in her career. Does it all over the floor for the Huskers. Of course, there's a lot more great volleyball coming up on the Big Ten Network. Wednesday night, conference powers square off in a primetime matchup when third-ranked Illinois travels to number 11, Purdue. Coverage starts at 8 Eastern Wednesday, presented by Pure Silk, only on BTA. We know that head coach Kevin Hamley wants an opportunity to get number one back, not only get number one overall, but also get a chance to move up those Big Ten standings. The Boilermakers earned a five-set win over Michigan last night. So it should be another great one in the Big Ten on Wednesday night. Yeah, and I'll tell you that Purdue team, boy, what have they done this year? They are on fire. They're moving <laughs> up the rankings. You know, many coaches said that this year the team that wins the conference championship will not be undefeated. They know that the talent is really spread out. And so it'll be interesting to see here if Nebraska remains undefeated. Head coach John Cook, one of those coaches who mentioned that no team is going to go 20 and 0. The days of going 20 and 0 were over. Tough serve by the Huskers. They're still undefeated at this point, though, on the season 11 and 0. Trailing in this match, though, 2 0. And Worth comes out of the break with the kill. Well, that is a huge snap for Worth, ripping the ball across court. And what Nebraska has done right now to the lead swing for cross-court shot. Nebraska has pulled Lauren Cook out so that the block on the right side is a little bit bigger. It's not that she's not setting well. They just need a more physical block on Nebraska's side of the net. Lauren Cook, of course, at 5'8". Not able to put up the same kind of block as the other Muskers. And top goes to Martin, puts it into the net, and an air on Penn State. Second left side position has not been strong for Penn State. So Martin gets inserted and makes a bad error. So now we're going to see that she gets subbed in and Whitney's coming back in. If she gets subbed out, excuse me, Whitney's coming back in. Maddie Martin has been used for her passing ability in that back row as a DS. Russ Rose has said he hasn't expected much of her swings, and when they get a couple of decent kills from her, they're usually pretty satisfied. Scott sends over a free ball. Brookheis will set it. She'll go to work again off the Penn State block. Now Whitney just into the game, out of play. Yeah, you don't want to have these types of hitting errors that didn't happen in sets one and two for Penn State. They were you know, exploding in all areas of the court. 
so right now trying to find the answer and we see Dorton coming in well, she's a real vocal leader for Penn State is that answer Darcy Dorton the 2009 Big Ten freshman of the year and All-American honorable mention for Penn State a big part of that run to the national championship in 2009 has had a tough time getting back on the floor this season. And got the to Grant. She ends the run of the Oscars. It's just a typical one ball attack. As a hitter, you want to be up in the air with your arm back when the setter's touching the ball. And you see she does that perfectly, catches one block in front of her, and then cuts the ball nicely. 13 6 advantage for the Huskers in set number three. Lauren Cook checked back into the match. Brooke Heiss was setting for the Huskers while she was on the bench. Carpenter already has a couple of services. Cook goes to the lane out off Darcy Dorton. Pancake can't get it for Penn State. It was long ago trying. And the point goes to the Huskers. Well, we knew Nebraska was going to get back into it offensively, and that's exactly what they've done here in the third set. We're seeing better passes, maybe slightly easier serves from Penn State. And we see John Cook. And our watchful eye is quick. Dorton with a swing. Over to Cuso who puts it away. Huskers taking control in set number three. Yeah, this is a serious shot here. This cross court shot, what an angle. You see how she makes contact on the ball and drops her thumb. It's tough to play defense when you're when the ball lands that close to the net. You really typically want to play at the 10 foot line, but the shot like that, boy, she earned that one. Hancock over on two. Dykstra able to get to it. Now Delano off the transition point for Nebraska. Well, not a lot of setters can do what Cook just did. In transition, she's moving off the net and then faces her middle hitter, Delano, and delivers a perfect 31. That's a tough skill to execute. She makes it look so easy. Audrey, we talked about both of these teams going to surprising four-set matches last night. And Delano reaches for it, and it will be a net violation. Point goes to Penn State, but we talk about that, and it's going to be a bit of a surprise. Both of these teams looking to this big matchup. Does it play into maybe the slow start for Nebraska in this contest? Well, I, I, I think Nebraska had a tough road trip here, and I do think that they that's one part of their game that they really need to clean up because they will be traveling at the tournament, and so they really need to figure that out. Uh, but I think the, the reason why we saw them play not to their you know level that we're used to playing is because Penn State serve was just clearing them off the court. So, you know, I think when a team serves that aggressively, you know, you have to almost wait it out and hope that they start making some errors or ease up on their serve a little bit. It seems like that's what's happening here in the third set. An error there by Deja McClendon and Nebraska on top by 10, 17 to 7 in set number three. Audrey, you had your own tough journey trying to get here today. A 12 hour journey to get to Happy Valley? Yeah, the, the roads were pretty bad. I missed my flight into State College from Philly, so I hooked up with a nice couple. Uh, <laughs> they just happened to be coming to State College, and that was my friend Don who drove me here and got me here safely, so I gotta appreciate that. Well, we're all happy that you made it, Audrey. Of course, for this kind of a match, you don't want to miss it. Oh, Wilberger. Cuso out of yeah. play in an error on Nebraska. Penn State down by seven now. A couple of errors by the Huskers. Yeah, so when you're this far ahead if you're Nebraska, you don't want to make those silly errors. Force Penn State to earn their points. You certainly don't want to give them anything at this point when you're ahead by ten. Back row for Brookheis. Clendon off the block. Over to Wilberger who gets the kill, the senior captain for the Huskers. Well, Wilberger got inserted here in the third set, and she's been pretty quiet, but what a nice option it has to, ha to be able to put in a senior that can be active in the offense and then get a good and a big kill for you. Nice timing with the setter and the hitter there, and then she just nails that line shot. 
now the all-dangerous Micah Hancock back at the service line for Penn State. And Cuso with the tip. Blending. Cook goes back to Man Cuso who puts it down. That's what Nebraska needed again, the side out keeping the service away from Hancock. Yeah, and their dig to kill ratio right now is really good. They're getting the ball up and then their swingers are terminating on that first dig. So nice job for Nebraska. They're really controlling the tempo of this match. Flipping the script from set two to set three. Penn State dominated in set number two. It's Nebraska now in set three. Penn State, though, you know when they serve tough, they can put together a, a run to get back in it. Right, and Dorton just rotated into the front court again. Such an emotional player. If she's in, typically they will ride on her adrenaline. We'll see if she can get in a solid place for her team. Dorton is usually the player who pumps up Penn State before the match. That one just out of play. Nebraska having a tough time out of system. A 19-12 lead for the Huskers. John Cook wants to talk it over, wants to make sure his team forces set number four back to Happy Valley in a moment. They are in the driver's seat for that Big Ten Conference title. However, Penn State has something to say about it. They've won the last eight titles in a row. Cook goes over to work. Penn State can't handle it. Can't handle work. And the outside hitters for Nebraska are coming alive. Hannah Worth, they call her a baller. That means she's got all the skills. And look at her rip that scene. Great vision. Nice leaping ability there by number 44, Hannah Worth. Service there by the Huskers. Penn State life in set number three. Nebraska five points away from taking the set. Penn State needs Longo to serve well here. So goes to Brooke Heiss, puts it down. Nebraska finding their rhythm and multiple hitters. Yeah, and it's that lower set to the right side. Brooke Harris, again, the first two sets was struggling, not hitting very well. Here in set three, she's really been able to turn things around. And when she hits well, boy, I'm telling you, it's a different looking Nebraska team, isn't it? She'll now be setting as Cook rotates out. Brooke is serving, she sends it long out of play. So Lauren Cook will check back in as a service taken away on that air. Good error because you want to rely on your block and defense to get points. So she's disappointed that she went back there and sailed her serve long. So when you, your coach does a strategy, a strategic substitution, you really want to follow the game plan. Work, big swing, but out of play. You can see why they call it a hammer, but it's just out of the line. Yeah, boy, oh boy, that was close too. So you cannot give that good line. But like if you give her cross court, she's going to hit one of those sharp shots. So you really, if you're a backcourt defender, you have to play well around the block in order to stop work. So now a six point advantage for Nebraska in set three. Carpenter, who already has a couple of aces back serving for Penn State. Cook, she'll look to the lane in the middle. Who puts down the kick? Yeah, Delano got up, and Penn State's block was nowhere near the point of attack. You see she had all kinds of room, and there were no hands that were challenging her on that hit. Of course, off-season shoulder surgery for Brooke Delano, something that she's still working with. She's coming back from that surgery. You do not recover from a torn labrum very quickly, so she's been dealing with pain throughout the season, but not quite as much as she had last year at the end of the season. So Nebraska on top, 22-15. They're trying to take set number three. Penn State wants to talk it over back in a moment. Isn't it interesting because Minnesota lost to Northwestern Friday night. So you can tell just by that, just how competitive this conference is and how you have to be ready to go every single night. Seven Big Ten teams in that ABCA poll. The most of any conference in the nation. I don't know if there's any argument anymore whether or not this is the best conference in collegiate women's volleyball. Dorton tries to go cross court. She puts it away. Well, if Dorton comes alive tonight, Penn State will be tough to deal with. I have seen that kid play spectacular volleyball, and on the outside, she can really get it done. All Rose wants her to do is get a couple kills. Now she's rotated to the backcourt, 
so she's out and a DS is in. And you see she has a message for her team as she rotates out. Before she steps out, she tries to pump them up a little bit, get her team going. They trail by six in set number three, the emotional leader for this team. Delano answers back, though. Yeah, right now, Mia Grant for Penn State is getting all tied up. She's not able to shuffle to the ball and get the block. You see, you've got to be balanced. You can see how her feet are kind of moving. When that center is touching the ball, you want to be loaded. You want your knees bent, and you want to be steady and stable. After the ball is released, you've got to go hard. And I would say right now, you've got to start committing with Delano a little bit, because she's getting a lot of kills in the front court. Delano now with five kills. Huskers to keep it alive. A three ball chance now for Penn State. Hancock looking for Grant. She gets the kill, so she's able to redeem herself. <laughs> That's right. And Cook sends over an interesting free ball. I think she was trying to catch Penn State's defense off balance, but take a look at that. You see Nebraska's block jumped up with the first hitter, and then the ball was set behind the setter. There's all kinds of room. Yeah, Grant, of course, playing a little bit more. One rotation in the back row, but she gets that service air, so now it's set point for Nebraska. Yeah, you see Russ Rose shaking his head there. You gotta be a gamer. You gotta be able to get on the end line and serve the ball in and serve it tough. That was Penn State's bread and butter in the first two sets. Hope serving for the set. Hancock looking to slay the give and go. Set over by Brooke Heiss and Nebraska takes set three. They're down now, 2-1. Huskers battling back here at Rec Hall. They fell behind momentum on Penn State's side, but Nebraska not going anywhere. Back to Rec Hall for more of the battle when we come back. Over to University of Park, Pennsylvania. Three different freshmen between these two teams are seeing snow for the very first time. Coming out of the state of California and also out of Texas, they've never experienced snowfall, and they got it in October. And of course, the fans in Happy Valley enjoying the Halloween weekend. A limbo in record. <laughs> Looks like a lot of fun. Of course, coming up on Wednesday, another phenomenal battle in the Big Ten Conference. It's Illinois and Purdue at 8 p.m. Eastern, presented by Pure Silk, the Illini. They're going to look to bounce back after falling to Minnesota, and the Boilermakers are going to try to build that RPI as they look to the NCAA tournament and get a win over a top 10 opponent. Of course, Penn State and Nebraska both hoping to knock off the top 10 team tonight. Like that Hancock served so well in set number one. You want to see her get going again. And Anna Worth did a nice job in set three. Yeah, and I'm waiting for Hancock to show that second attack, you know, when the ball comes up to her. Instead of setting the ball, she swings hard with that left swing of hers, left-handed swing. So she has not shown that yet. I wonder if that's going to come up here in the fourth set. We'll see if Penn State can end this match in set number four, or are we in store for another five-set affair between these two programs? We talk about the last two meetings going to five sets. In 2008, what arguably could be considered one of the best matches in the history of collegiate volleyball. In 08, in Omaha, Nebraska, at the Quest Center, Penn State went up 2-0. Nebraska fought their way back, forced a fifth set, and then Penn State won and went on to win that national title, their second in that streak that they've had. But Clinton this time gets the kill. One thing about that match, it was the highest attendance in the history of women's volleyball with over 17,000 on hand. Yeah, I love watching video of that. And I love watching video of this kid crank the ball. Hancock really doing a good job of saving that ball that was heading over the net. So, a little athletic play there by Penn State Center. Not start well in set four. Huskers going to make Cuso. Grant gets it over, but a chance now for the Cornhuskers. Work from the back row. Hancock to slay. Another chance, but it's locked. Good decision by Nina Grant to let it go. It was worth that had the hitting error. It's a broken play, and typically Nebraska does very well with broken plays. All hitters are ready to go, and Cook decides who she wants to set at the very last minute for that time of the air. Tight inside is the kill.
kiss of death for an outside hitter. Take a look at this. Non-setter touching the ball. The ball you're going to see was almost set on top of the net, and that is truly the kiss of death for a hitter. Unless you can jump over top or jump high enough to hit over top of the block, and that time in Cusa not able to deliver. Can't jump over that six foot six block of Katie Slay. The Scott stuffed now by Wilberger of the Huskers. Wilberger again wasn't a starter here in this match. Has come alive, and I think Cook has been keeping Trainer on the bench to go in for Cook and be that front row block for Cook should he need it. So a lot of options here for Nebraska. Wilberger has not started. Tough serve by the Huskers, but she's still a six on the team in blocks. Looking for another one there. Trainer with another chance. Longo, back to the play, and finally gets a cross court. Oh, she had to work for that one. Three attacks in that rally, two being blocked. Nicely covered by Penn State's defense. Longo putting the ball nice and high, allowing McClendon to get a big approach. And a strong cross court shot. Now Micah Hancock, who has five services, is again. Hook to Brookheis. Looking for that all important side out. It flips over. Hannah Worth gets it. Russ Rose wanted a call. I think he might have wanted a lift there, called against Nebraska, but Worth able to save it. Yeah, this is what hustle gets you right here. A nice heads up play. Look at that ball trickling right over the net. Impossible for Penn State to get up, and Rose is really upset about the no call. So fortunate for Nebraska. It looked as if he was just going to go into the net, but it trickles over and falls down. Russ Rose, though, having a conversation with Dan Hauser, one of the officials in this match. He can't believe the call. And of course, Allie Longo as well, talking to the up official, Michael Blaylock. Fans not happy with it. And they will not change that call, so it's a 4 2 lead for Penn State. And Hauser gives that point to Nebraska. Dispute here between the and coaches and the officials. Yeah, you can really hear the fans just getting so upset, too. They know the margin there. That's a two point swing. Penn State could have been up 5 1. Over to McClendon, who's able to rally the ground. Man, McClendon got all of that, didn't she? Boy, she made the refs look at that hit and say, hey, the ball doesn't lie. Usually, when there is a no call or a bad call, you say the ball doesn't lie because the <laughs> team that complains generally gets the point. McClendon made sure that her team got that point. 13 kills now for Deja McClendon to lead all hitters. Brookheis taps it over. Longo with a good dive. McClendon back row. And Cuso now for the back row gets the touch and the point. Again, Nebraska out of system and gets the point. Mancuso being aggressive and getting that ball that's just put high in the middle of the court and swinging big. Into the net, McClendon can't send over that free ball. An air of the net lines, 5 4 and set four. Russ can't stand to see those kind of hits. No, it's really disappointing when you work so hard and you know you have to work so hard to get points. All you want to do is put a free ball over and block and dig for a point. Tapped over, they're going to whistle against Hannah Work for reaching over. You have to let part of the ball cross the plane of the net. She did not that time. Yeah, you really want to be aggressive as a server, but you got to let the setter set the ball. So here you're blocking the setter, you're reaching over as she is setting the ball, and that's a violation. with the set to Scott. And Scott will get the point worth it into the Nebraska bench. She couldn't get to it. Well, smart move by Russ Rose. He's got Dorton in, and he moved her to the right side to get some activity from Scott on the left side. So players moving around. You see that ball that goes high off the blocker's hands is so hard for Nebraska's backcourt to track down. First kill for Ariel Scott since set two. She was very quiet in set three. With the bump set, looking for Scott in the game. Into the net. No touch. We're going to call 
four contacts. They did not go over. So that goes against Nebraska. Nebraska regrouping here. The team getting together, trying to change the momentum. Need a timeout in order to do so. 8-4 lead in set number four. Penn State on top. She has really come alive, like you said. She had a magical freshman season, but has been up and down. But so far in this match, especially in this set, she is getting it done. And you see how excited her team is to see the old Deja back on the court tonight. 13 kills for Deja McClendon with three blocks. Cook over to Valeno. Huskers look to her again, and she gets a big kill. When you have speed in your hitters, you can run a fast offense like this. So Delano showing her athleticism and quick feet. And again, she's beating the block. She's getting to the point of attack and finding no block in front of her. This is the Penn State door into the block. Hancock back set to Jordan with the tap and the kill. Talk about how much energy she has out there. Gets blocked on the first play. She knows that her defense is back. Knows that there's perhaps a slower player in the right back area of the court and tips it just perfectly over top of the block so that she challenges that right back player. Side to Delano again. Get up, but a free ball chance now for the Huskers. Good to work. Swing, but into the net. Penn State the block looked as if it might have clipped the net, but a block for Penn State. Yeah, and Nia, look at that save. And then the free ball goes over, but Nia Grant really showing some great lateral movement here. Speed to the outside. I don't think that ball really crossed the point. Brookhuis out of system, sends over the free ball. Hancock on two, out of play, looking for the touch. Won't get it. I was waiting for Hancock to attack the ball, but I certainly wasn't expecting that. She's usually money when she decides to swing on the ball. That time she decided to go with a tip, a power tip at that, but she sailed that one long. 10 6 lead in set four for Penn State. They lead the match 2 1. And Red Call in University Park, Pennsylvania. Hancock to do another tap from Gore. And Cuso. Great dive and save by Carpenter, but Mancuso takes advantage of the overpass. A tip for 10, Mancuso sends a tip over, and then a great defensive get by Penn State. Look at that. There you see that overpass kill by Mancuso. It wasn't perfect, it, tape, it hit the top of the tape, but nonetheless, the point goes to Nebraska. 12 kills for Mancuso now. Cook goes to Delano. Longo with another good dig. Jordan this time, strong swing off the block. Good cuts. Carpenter with the set, back row for McClendon, finds that back block. Well, when you've got Carpenter in the backcourt, not only is she a good defensive player, but she can take the second ball and set it on the money. Here you see she's gonna take the ball and lead her hitter, Deja McClendon, with that back row attack. So nice set by the former setter, Kristen Carpenter. Leno, Gonzalez with a good up. Grant in the middle, out of play. Grant had a great opportunity to swing for a point. Sailed that one wide on the left side. You gotta keep going strong if you're a middle attacker. You gotta sell the fact that you are gonna get the set. For Mike and Hancock, you've got to make good decisions at this point. You really need to set the hitters that are hot and not the ones that are not. We talked about earlier in the match how important airs would be on Penn State's side, but both teams high air tonight. 24 airs for Nebraska, 20 now for Penn State. So when both of the teams have a lot of airs, it's not quite as bad for Penn State. Oh, so they got a lot of struggled with those airs. McClendon tapping down. She really disguised that tip, and that's what I liked about it. It was a perfect set. A lot of rookie outside hitters tip only on bad sets. This time you see that she has her arm back. She really doesn't drop her elbow until the very last moment. So a nice, smart shot by Deja McClendon. Cook to Roberger, tools the block. 
And Wilberger has been a super sub for Nebraska. She has come in and has really contributed offensively. She's faced with one block here, goes high off the hands. So again, it's so nice when you've got a bench with a 6-1 middle blocker, a senior at that, to provide that leadership and offense that you need at a crucial time. Clendon again. Cook. Sent over by Brooke Heiss. Good decision there. She gets it out of reach of a diving Dominique Gonzalez. Brooke Heiss with 11 kills now. Both her and Gina Mancuso in double digits for the Huskers. Now trying to get back into it for Penn State. Hancock to Slay. Out of play. No touch. Well, I must be seeing things because I thought that was a big time touch. I don't, but Rose is not questioning that call, so perhaps I need glasses. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long day. Right? <laughs> yes. Give me the pass this time. 12 11 uh -huh. for Penn State in set four. Hancock just tries to tap it over. Dykstra is there. A book hikes. Slade taps it back. Giving her some kudos. Take a look at this dig. That is so big time and clutch for that kid. And then Deja delivering with that cross court shot. Lakestra just can't handle it. Up by two. Penn State gets Hancock serving again. She had four in a row earlier in this match. Mancuso. Hancock to McClendon. Mancuso again. Down by Slam. Last two times that Hancock has served, Nebraska got the all-important side out. This time, though, Katie Slay able to get the point for Penn State. Yeah, it was just a roll shot attempt by Gina Mancuso, and Slay being the big physical kid that she is, just stays put and eats it up. Into the net this time by Hancock. You hear the groan from the crowd. They wanted to see another service ace. Point goes back to Nebraska. And you hear the groan by the crowd and a collective sigh of relief from the Huskers <laughs> and the Husker bench. Back to McClendon, big swing and kill. Deja McClendon with 17 so far. Yeah, I'm just kind of speechless right now because I'm so excited to see this kid do so well. You know, she really struggled and for her to kind of keep pushing and trying her best to improve her game this sophomore season, it's nice to see that uh, she's really elevated her game and is playing well tonight. She had under 225 and four consecutive Big Ten matches earlier this year. Scott with the air out of play. As you mentioned, McClendon has been seeing that focus from opponents' defenses. They have seen and put up a big block, two blockers. So Ariel Scott has seen some things open up, but now McClendon getting some options after Scott started so well. And you know, last year, Deja McClendon had some other great teammates around <laughs> Just her, like Brown and Wilson. So she, you know, was a strong hitter, but there were certainly times if the block focused on her that uh, it was Carpenter at the time could go other places. So really, the more that the offense improves and I mean from other hitters, Deja will have an easier time to score. This time it's Katie Slay, a different hitter for Penn State to put it away and give Penn State the three-point margin. Slay again, just with this tip, it's not really a crisp shot, but it's got that backspin on it, and it's going to the corner just far enough to be out of the reach of Gina Mancuso. Slay just five kills hitting 200. And we'll call the lift against Nebraska. The officials call the lift against Lauren Cook. And John Cook wants a timeout. His team down by four as Penn State is within eight of taking the match. Well, this was a crucial timeout for Cook and Nebraska. You know, they're making all sorts of errors. And for Cook to be called on a lift is not a typical error for that kid. So when that happens, when your team is out of sorts, it makes sense. Call a timeout, kind of regroup, see if you can get the point out of the timeout to change momentum. Our 
Andre, Andre, what is Russ talking about to his team with them up by four and set number four and a chance to win this match? Well, I would imagine he's talking about getting the serve in and get it tough because that was the moneymaker for them in sets one and two. I also think he's talking about who is in their front court right now and how, right now in this rotation, how they're going to score another point. For these two teams, the coaches, the assistant coaches always have the rotations handy so they know particular rotation, who will Nebraska go to? What are their tendencies in this particular rotation? Be sure to stay tuned right after volleyball for an encore presentation of Tailgate 48 presented by Omaha Stakes. That's coming up next after us. Of course, we have a great finish coming up here. Will it be set four? Will we go to set five once more? Nebraska out of this break. They need to make those adjustments. They don't have Micah Hancock back there serving, so they're not quite as worried about that serve. However, they've seen Slay fall to the middle. Deja McClendon is hot. They have to defend the multiple attacks from Penn State. That's right. And I remember the first time around when Penn State played Nebraska, we talked about how Scott played so well and her uh, level of play was elevated. But near the tail end of that fifth set, I remember Scott making a couple crucial errors. So if they can just play steady and consistent from start to finish, I think this will be a different looking Penn State team and we've already seen how much they have improved from the beginning of the season to the midpoint of the Big Ten Conference. Seven airs in that fifth set for Penn State earlier this year against Nebraska. Coming down on those airs is Scott with the kick. Ariel Scott. We talk about her numbers improving. She started perfect, a six out of nine. Not a perfect match, but not any airs to begin with six kills on nine airless swings. Yeah, and that is a tough shot to make because this it's an awkward angle when you're a right-handed hitter on the right side of the court from where the set is coming from. So really athletic play by Scott. And a big block, Nia Grant and Ayanna Whitney combined. Two freshmen up in the net for Penn State. Well, if you're Penn State again, this is the point where you got to believe you're clearly ahead You've got to play consistently, and even if Nebraska gets the next point, you've got to believe that you'll side out and score the following play. Penn State double up Nebraska in blocks. Big kill, though, by Mancuso. Oscars needed that one. Yeah, it, it's so interesting to me that she only started in five matches last year. So talk about a kid who has stepped up from her freshman to sophomore season. And actually now she's a junior, so as a sophomore, she only started in five. So what a what a great uh, surprise she has been for Nebraska. Cook over to Delena. Now Scott puts it away again. Mancuso couldn't dig it out. So Scott's hitting high right in the middle of the court. Gina Mancuso struggling here. So it'll be interesting to see if Cook puts a backcourt sub in a defensive specialist for Mancuso. You know, she is such an offensive weapon back there, but you kind of have to see what the other team is doing and how they're getting points. And right now, Mancuso not playing superb backcourt defense. Let's take five points away from taking the match. Worth, though, with the answer and a big kill. Well, Worth silenced this crowd with that gun. Wow, what an arm she has. Such a powerful swing from Hannah Worth. I almost want to say look out to the opponents who have to go up against her. Hancock goes to Whitney. Now Mancuso. Bumped over, free ball chance now for Penn State. Hancock takes the swing and gets the kill. She was going to pull that little tool out, and she did at the perfect time. Penn State now up 21-15 in the fourth. Penn State took set number one, 25-17. Set two, 25-15. Went into the intermission with the 2-0 lead. And then Nebraska came back and took set three. Penn State in the driver's seat now. Hancock goes to McClendon. Hands wanted it. Now they do so with the kill. Wow, Dykstra saving that point for Nebraska, but on Penn State's side of the net, Gonzalez with a great dig, so what a great job. The defense for both sides of the net, but then finally Longo wasn't able to control that bullet from Mancuso. 
Fans rising to their feet in rec hall, trying to will their team on to a win over the top ranked team in the nation. Great, high and long. They're gonna call a touch off the Huskers. Man, Cuso is livid, she can't believe the call. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a close look at this. I really didn't see it from where I'm sitting. I didn't see the touch. I want to be specific. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure there was a touch on that. So Mancuso justifiably upset on that call. Tough for the Huskers to see that one go as Penn State three points away. Cook looks to Mancuso. But the ball never lies. McClendon. Wilberger sends over a free ball. Hancock with the chance. Goes to Slay. Stop. Matt Cuso, as we said, ball doesn't lie. They get the ball. Yeah, she definitely terminated that play with her power at the net. Sealing the net. Take a look at this. Nice shuffle step, reaching up and over. But Dykstra for Nebraska. The libero saving the play. She made a key dig to keep the ball alive for her Huskers. Freshman Libera out of Redondo Beach, California for the Huskers. Stepping into big shoes, trying to get some in here. Digs down the stretch. McClendon over and down. Smart, 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 smart. McClendon taking a little bit off of that. It wasn't a tip. I'm not quite sure what you call that. It was a really top spin hit. She just knew where the defense was and put it where they were not. So good heads up play by Deja. Kill number 18 for McClendon and Hancock serving again. Brookheights. Gonzalez with a great up. Now Scott with the kill. Match point for Penn State. Well, we thought that the conference champion would not be undefeated. It looks like Penn State could take this one from Nebraska. A one win would put Penn State one match behind the Huskers in the overall standings. Hancock the ace, Penn State takes down number one. How fitting that it is Micah Hancock who started this match with four consecutive service aces. She gets an ace to close it out at Penn State. Gets the win and knocks off the lone remaining unbeaten team in the Big Ten prior to this match. They steal back some of that momentum in the conference, Audrey, and have a good chance again to go after title number nine. And how fitting that it was Hancock's serve that delivered that ace to end the match. The performance of the match is brought to you by Pure Silk. Of course, it's Deja McClendon with 18 kills for Penn State stepping up in a huge performance and avenging that loss from earlier this year. The Nittany Lions take it in four sets, a 3-1 victory to finish off the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and this rivalry continues to build. Rec Hall is pleased with the outcome for their Penn State club as they get the victory. For Audrey Flaw and our entire Big Ten Network crew, I am Mike Wolf. A phenomenal match in Rec Hall for Penn State as they earn the victory, the number eight team in the country, defeating Nebraska number one.